from the birth of dynamite to the largest man-made explosion in history. Here are bomb facts that will blow your minds. Right off the bat, we're starting with the most ironic fact that I've learned this week. You know the Nobel Prize? Well, it's named after the Swedish inventor, Alfred Nobel. So what did this Nobel dude do to have his name forever be synonymous with peace? He invented dynamite. <laughs> yep. Nobel was a passionate pyrotechnician, and he was absolutely fascinated with the potential of nitroglycerin as an explosive. He invented the detonator, or blasting cap, which enabled him to control the explosion from a distance via a fuse. Even so, nitroglycerin was still far too volatile for commercial use. After numerous failed experiments, Nobel mixed it with diatomaceous earth, which basically consists of fossilized algae. This stabilized the compound and made it safe for transportation without reducing its effectiveness as an explosive. As the original demolition man, Alfred Nobel triggered the quest for bigger explosive potential, which culminated decades later. Have you heard the story about the guy who invented the knock? He got the Nobel Prize. <laughs> Pop quiz, hot shot. Can you guess the name of the research project that developed the first nuclear weapon? I'll give you a hint. It's named after a drink, a sweet drink. See if you can guess the correct answer in the comment section below and stay tuned till later on in the video to see if you're right. In the early 1990s, a US Air Force laboratory researched alternative options to traditional bombs. One of the ideas was to take a strong aphrodisiac put it inside the bomb, and then detonate that over enemy troops. The effects wouldn't be lethal, but the bomb would cause the enemy combatants to become uncontrollably attracted to one another. That's right, it was not an H-bomb, it was an F-bomb. It would presumably debilitate enemy soldiers in combat. Other proposed chemical agents were meant to incapacitate troops through heavy sweating or flatulence. The objective was to make the enemy so smelly that they literally could be sniffed out of hiding. Yeah, it's true. The United States Air Force briefly toyed with the idea of developing the ultimate stink bomb. At some point in the future, the world might see the birth of a new supreme weapon. The ominous sounding antimatter bomb. Antimatter particles are like the opposites of regular particles in terms of their charge. Think of it like looking yourself in a mirror. It's still you, but slightly different. I'll spare you the physics and skip right to the good stuff. When antimatter collides with regular matter, it results in the full energy release of both through something called annihilation. This would allow for some truly monstrous weapons. Thankfully, antimatter is incredibly difficult to produce, store, and contain. The production cost of a single gram of antimatter is estimated to be $63 trillion. Explosive devices have been around for centuries. While Alfred Nobel is definitely an OG when it comes to modern bombs, explosives have been around for centuries. They were first developed in China with the discovery of gunpowder. 11th century bombs used bamboo tubes, and in the 13th century, gunpowder was placed inside of cast iron shells. They were called thunder crash bombs because of the sound they made, and the projectiles that they dispersed could pierce through iron armor. During the Cold War from 1946 to 1991, the fate of the world seemed to be in the hands of two superpowers, the Soviet Union, boo, and the United States, yay! <laughs> We competed in everything, not the least of which was nuclear armament. The constant threat of all-out nuclear war contributed to a global state of fear. While tensions have greatly reduced after the fall of the Soviet Union, score one capitalism, the planet's nuclear kingpins are still Russia and the US. With each boasting over 6,000 warheads, their combined arsenal accounts for more than 90% of the total among nuclear states. Hopefully we continue to use peaceful means to mitigate our acrimony. Oh snap, I just said the word of the day, acrimony. Acrimony means anger and bitterness. Good synonyms would be rancor and hostility. See if you can use acrimony in a sentence in the comment section below and we'll feature the person with the most creative phrase in our next video.
When it comes to the biggest booms on the planet, it's all a matter of fission and fusion. Better grab your goggles and lab coat. It's about to get physical, physical. The word nuclear is actually derived from the atomic nucleus. This is a small, dense region at the center of an atom. It's formed of protons and neutrons. What makes these particles stick together is called nuclear binding energy. In 1938, a team of scientists discovered that if you take a radioactive nucleus and split it into two lighter nuclei, that there's a sudden and powerful release of energy. This is called nuclear fission, and it's what made the first nuclear weapons possible. By contrast, fusion is when light nuclei combine to form other nuclei. Imagine it like a relationship. Fission is a breakup, while fusion is what happens on a third date, if you're not me. Both instances lead to massive energy release. The reason that I brought up the fission-fusion distinction is to better explain the hydrogen bomb. This bomb is what's known as a thermonuclear weapon. It turns out that making atoms play well with each other in a fusion reaction requires temperatures close to those of the interior of the sun. Hydrogen atoms are up for it, but on Earth, the conditions can only be generated through a fission bomb. So in a thermonuclear weapon, detonating a fission bomb facilitates the fusion reaction of hydrogen isotopes called tritium and deuterium. This releases an incredible amount of energy, which can surpass a regular fission bomb by the order of thousands. If your mind isn't blown yet, then you should know that fusion reactions are what power all the stars in the universe, including our sun. In 1978, an American satellite detected a double flash of light over the Indian Ocean. The official cause of the incident remains unknown. The authorities were as quick to move away from the Flash conversation as the comic character of the same name. Some theories claim that a meteorite had hit the satellite, causing it to get some funny ideas. However, all the previous flashes detected by Velva satellites had been caused by nuclear weapons tests. This meant that somebody wasn't playing nice by performing an undeclared nuclear bomb detonation. I won't list any of the suspects here, they know who they are. What's a bigger claim to the title of ultimate badass than surviving an atomic bomb explosion? Give up? Surviving two atomic bomb explosions. That's what happened to Tsutomo Yamaguchi. Although there are a number of people known to have survived both blasts, he's the only one officially recognized by the Japanese government. He lived in Nagasaki, but was in Hiroshima on a business trip when the atomic bomb was dropped on August 6, 1945. Even though he was injured in the blast, he returned to work in Nagasaki on August 9th. His supervisor called him a madman when he spoke about a fireball that had pretty much leveled the city. That's when the second bomb was detonated in Nagasaki. Yamaguchi survived the second blast and lived to be 93 years old. It's answer time! So what research project developed the first nuclear weapons? The right answer was the Manhattan Project. This was the code name that the US Army attributed to the research endeavor responsible for the two atomic bombs that were dropped on Japan during World War II. It was led by the US with support from Canada and the UK, and the bulk of the project's funding went into building factories for the production of fission material. You may have seen those heavily armored blast suits worn by trained bomb disposal personnel. While they do protect against fire and fragmentation, the most dangerous aspect that the modern suits attempt to tackle is the shock wave of a blast. A shock wave has two components, the positive wave and the negative wave. The first travels outward from the blast's point of origin. The second travels back to the point of origin as the shock bubble collapses. It's a two-way street of destruction that can wreck air-filled organs. Now we've come full circle. We started with the father of dynamite, and we've arrived at the mother of all bombs. Developed by the Soviet Union and tested in October of 1961, the Tsar bomb is the most powerful explosive ever detonated. This hydrogen bomb's approximate yield was over 50 megatons of TNT. That's about 10 times more powerful than all the munitions dropped during World War II combined. 
and that includes both atomic bombs. The bomb's original design was for a yield of 100 megatons, but detonating it could have world-ending consequences. Even with the lesser design, the plane crew that dropped the Tsar bomb had a 50-50 chance of escaping the blast radius. The fireball was visible from almost 620 miles away, and the mushroom cloud was seven times taller than Mount Everest. The shock waves could still be detected even after their third trip around the world. Simply put, the Tsar bomb represented the absolute peak of man-made destruction and a terrifying glimpse into what all-out modern war might look like. Thanks for watching. What was your favorite bomb fact? Let us know in the comment section below, and don't forget to detonate that subscribe button so you can keep up with all of our newest videos. Bye.